June 25th. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for all the ways that you watch over me, for helping me to have new understanding, learning more about you and how you work. Please guide me. Help me to know what you would have me to do. Help me to be able to use my gifts in the way that makes sense, the way that you've planned. God, I pray that you would give me wisdom, give me understanding, give me strength and encouragement. Pray that you would bless me and everyone listening who is yearning to draw close to you, that you would help us to see something new, to give us a special insight as we read your word. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. 2 Kings 8, 1 through 9, 13 Then Elisha spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore it will come upon the land for seven years. So when the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God, And she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines seven years. It came to pass, at the end of seven years, that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, please, all the great things Elisha has done. Now it happened as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life, that there was the woman whose son he had restored to life, appealing to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed a certain officer for her, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now. Then Elisha went to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, The man of God has come here. And the king said to Hazael, Take a present in your hand, and go to meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? So Hazael went to meet him and took a present with him, of every good thing of Damascus, forty camel loads. And he came and stood before him and said, Your son, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to you, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? And Elisha said to him, Go, say to him, You shall certainly recover. However, the Lord has shown me that he will really die. Then he set his countenance in a stare until he was ashamed, and the man of God wept. And Hazael said, Why is my Lord weeping? He answered, Because I know the evil that you will do to the children of Israel. Their strongholds you will set on fire, and their young men you will kill with the sword, and you will dash their children and rip open their women with child. So Hazael said, But what is your servant, a dog, that he should do this gross thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you will become king over Syria. Then he departed from Elisha and came to his master, who said to him, What did Elisha say to you? And he answered, He told me you would surely recover. But it happened on the next day that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it over his face so that he died and Hazael reigned in his place. Now in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, having been king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, began to reign as king of Judah. He was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah, 
for the sake of his servant David, as he promised him to give a lamp to him and his sons forever. In his days Edom revolted against Judah's authority and made a king over themselves. So Joram went to Zair and all his chariots with him. Then he rose by night and attacked the Edomites, who had surrounded him and the captains of the chariots, and the troops fled to their tents. Thus Edom has been in revolt against Judah's authority to this day, and Libna revolted at that time. Now the rest of the acts of Joram and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Joram rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Then Ahaziah his son reigned in his place. In the twelfth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Omri, king of Israel. And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. Now he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to war against Hazael, king of Syria at Ramoth-Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Joram. Then king Joram went back to Jezreel to recover from the wounds which the Syrians had inflicted on him at Ramah, when he fought against Hazael, king of Syria. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab in Jezreel, because he was sick. And Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Get yourself ready. Take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. Now when you arrive at that place, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him rise up from among his associates, and take him to an inner room. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee, and do not delay. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead, and when he arrived, there were the captains of the army sitting, and he said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu said, For which one of us? And he said, For you, commander. Then he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of the Lord over Israel. You shall strike down the house of Ahab your master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab all the males in Israel, both bond and free. So I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahijah. The dogs shall eat Jezebel on the plot of ground at Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came out to the servants of his master, and one said to him, Is all well? Why did this madman come to you? And he said to them, You know the man and his babble. And they said, A lie! Tell us now! So he said, Thus and thus he spoke to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then each man hastened to take his garment and put it under him on the top of the steps, and they blew trumpets, saying, Yehu is king! Acts sixteen, sixteen through 40 Now it happened as we, Paul and his fellow workers, went to pray, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us, and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, 
who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And thus she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the officers, saying, Let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, Romans, and have thrown us into prison. And now do they put us out secretly? No, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. And the officers told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. Then they came and pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to depart from the city. So they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them and departed. Psalm 143, 1-12, a Psalm of David Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness answer me, and in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no one living is righteous. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. Therefore my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Selah. Answer me speedily, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, and you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. 
Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. In your mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my soul, for I am your servant. Proverbs 17.26 Also, to punish the righteous is not good, nor to strike princes for their uprightness. Thank you for joining me as we read Scripture for Life.